What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 556 of the Smart Gun Moment Smack Talk Podcast Hot Tags of the Week. We're going to be running down everything that happened in the world of pro wrestling that we feel like talking about, whether it's rumors or TV recap or news or speculation or somebody leaving a company and somebody you know, possibly being booted out of the company, depending on uh, what their future has and all sorts of different things. A new title, two new titles actually being announced and you know, lots of crazy things. Lots of interesting topics to talk about here. So as we go along here and we talk about what we want to say, we want to know what you have to say. As always, drop a comment below. Tell us what your thoughts are. And if you are over there on YouTube and you're doing that, make sure that you show your support in all the different ways that you can. We'll talk about that a little bit before we get into that. Let's actually introduce who is going to be talking if you are brand new to the podcast. Well, I'm your host as always, Tony Mango. Joining me as always are Robert E. Felice. Hello, everyone. And Callum Wiggins. Hello, everyone. I feel very, uh, I don't know, I'm, I got that radio voice going on today. <laughs> Maybe I'm just kind of in that mode. I still think that I want to do one of those smooth jazz episodes at some point, just catch somebody off guard. But um, I guess we're going to be dealing with that today. Not quite ad non verk level, but, you know, we'll do it with uh, what we can. Uh, <laughs> never going to forget that guy. It's so good. So we got a lot of talks, uh, topics to talk about here, and um, I think we should just start diving right into it let's talk about one of the biggest stories of the week and one of the ones that we can just start speculating about on a crazy level we got confirmation now that triple h is going to be taking over wwe creative he is not just the head of the talent relations department he is actually the head of the creative vision of what we're going to get going forward and that has immediately caused some stir of people that were in all elite wrestling going you know what if this would have happened a little bit beforehand i probably would have stuck around and stayed in wwe rather than heading into AEW. or somebody had said and we don't know of course who these names are but somebody said you know i'm glad that i went but if i would have been under the triple h regime probably wouldn't have even signed to begin with you know and we can of course try to predict the future as much as we can for people that might jump back over or people who might actually not be a fan of triple H in charge, Brock Lesnar being one of them. And, uh, you know, the future, we don't know what's going to happen, but we've all said before that we are much more into the idea of a triple H led creative than for Vince to carry over with what he's doing. We got a little bit more confirmation as well this week that one of the things that was going on backstage apparently was, that Vince would say horrible things that he wouldn't want on the air and that he needed to be quote filtered quite a bit that he would forget constantly what matches they had already done or segments that they had already done. And that that would be some kind of problematic thing with the creative team, which makes a lot of sense considering all the goddamn repetitive matches that we keep getting and that he would forget people's names, which is, I don't know if it's maybe indicative of like the writers and everything saying that they would forget his name yeah back and forth like you know hey i'm uh jim anderson backstage writing and vince doesn't remember my name or if it's a matter of not remembering the superstars names which could be an indication of why it's always shorting their names you know you don't have to remember tomaso champa it's just champa but all these different signs pointing towards this needed to happen and that it could be a really good thing going forward for a lot of people what are you guys thinking about this So I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm in two minds about it because I'm of the impression that with Triple H in charge, I'm excited for the reason that it means that Vince isn't in charge anymore, not necessarily that Triple H is in charge. And that's not to really have a significant slight against him. It's just that, yes, there was some really, really good NXTs in the like like that uh you'd say probably about 2016 to 2018 2019 period some really really good television for an audience that was very small in an indie style building with one two hour show that they recorded in one or at that point one hour show that they recorded in bunches and then pushed out basically from takeover to takeover they did like two sets of tapings so it was a lot easier to manage stories in that, in that by taking that approach. 
It's not live week to week television as you would get with Raw and SmackDown. And realistic when NXT did go into that period where they were doing two hour shows and live TV, the quality of the programming dipped significantly. Of course, the pandemic had a big part to do with that as well. But I think that people were getting a bit too overexcited with the thought of Triple H taking over Crave, like, oh my God, this is going to be the saviour. I think that it's good for the morale of the wrestlers and a lot of people will be more excited to join WWE. So that's a positive. But I don't think that this revolution in terms of booking and approaching things is going to be as fundamental as people think it's going to be. Realistically, Triple H has his favourites and he'll push his favourites the same way that he did in NXT. It just means that certain people that may have been being pushed under Vince will no longer get pushed. Other people will get pushed. And it will still have the same kind of problems that Raw in particular has had, which is it's three hours long. And that's the main issue is the fact that it's even a really, really well-booked show can't sustain most people's attention three hours a week it's just it's just not possible remember um, he has said though that he wishes that it would go back to two hours i mean he said yeah, that but, like seven years ago but he's not in control of that though no yeah, i mean but it is there's more of a chance of it happening with him under the uh yeah holding the the strings than for vince i don't think it's well, going to happen well, but there's more of a chance he doesn't, have he doesn't hold strings, any strings yeah he doesn't hold any strings in that regard he, re- he holds strings in regards to creative control, and he's the uh, VP of talent relations. So, he, so basically, his remit is the roster, and what direction they take. Stephanie and Nick hold the the top ross, and then they're beholden to the shareholders, and the shareholders want money. And if they want money, then they need to be running three hours. So that is essentially that's it. That's their their revenue comes from the TV channels and the advertising that that generates for them. So you're more likely to see SmackDown move to three hours before you move. You see Raw drop down to two. I do, I do have faith in the change of the way that they tell stories. I do think you will see some significant change there. I don't think you're going to see it overnight. No, I do think. No. Go ahead. I say I don't. I I'm very convinced we're going to see change, but there is a difference between the term change and improvement. Mm-hmm. So yes, I think there's going to be a different approach, and hope and realistically at this moment in time, any kind of change is improvement because one of the biggest issues with Raw, SmackDown, or WWE television is its staleness. It's one of the reasons why NXT has actually become slightly more entertaining because at least with NXT, it doesn't feel stale because even if a lot of the shit they're doing is very much against like throwing crap against the wall and see what sticks at least that's different and interesting even if it's bad whereas Raw's back down they're not even at the point where they're bad anymore they're just repetitive mundane monot- yeah it's just monotonous you're watching it for the sake of watching it rather than actually like it would be better if it was bad because if it was bad there'd be stuff to talk about I mean, there's plenty of bad things to talk about as well. I've I ripped apart that I really hated that Marie segment with the. Yeah, but um, even that to me is just super lame. Like, yeah, I I would. I, I'm, it's getting to the point where I would take like segments like the Bailey, this is your life, or the old day, or things like that, just so it has something worth talking about. A segment like that would just. Yeah, it's, it definitely wasn't a good segment, but you'll forget about it by next week or the week after. Like, I want something that's either memorably good or memorably bad to happen. Now, that doesn't feel like that's happened on Raw or, or in WWE for, well, since probably the Cody Seth match, Hell in a, Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Yeah, for anybody I, I that's just... been saying as well that they think that he's going to make a big splash at SummerSlam and there's going to be some big changes and everything, I still don't think that that's going to happen. I'm looking more for not even actually the Raw after SummerSlam. I'm thinking the Raw and SmackDown after Clash at the Castle is when we're first going to start seeing some changes because I think that they're well, kind I... of hands are tied for this event and the next one a little bit. I think they'd be stupid not to initiate small things yeah, they can do there's going to be small to, changes at least like SummerSlam should have i keep saying it it should be rock and roman should be a bloody match and it should let you know hey it's okay to have this level of blood when there's finality that way you get people into the idea of 
you know, okay, we're going to get a little more aggressive. And then through the months, you get more and more ramped up with whatever change you're going to do. But I think that it should start a little bit with SummerSlam. And we might have seen some of those changes a little bit this week already. We might still see some more on SmackDown tonight. You know, not sure what exactly is going to happen. But to go back to the previous episode of SmackDown, for instance, because we didn't get a chance to talk about that because we, you know, we watched those after the hot tags. One of those some weird random things that happened since when we were talking about it the last time was the Max Dupree and the Maxine Dupree thing. That is a weird scenario where they build up this maximum male models thing and for a couple weeks he's like you know hey we're gonna debut and whatever and pretty soon right after that max dupree is replaced with sophia cromwell from nxt so there goes the jenny thing which you know i'm fine with uh being wrong about that they nixed the cromwell part of von wagner and mr stone but she wasn't really doing anything well with that where you know uh, Stone tried to address it, and uh, Wagner just goes, look, if she wants to be a model, I don't give a shit. And it just, okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that could be a little bit of a sign. Maybe that was the Triple H call, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but Triple H more than likely would have something better for Max Dupree to just go back to the LA Knight gimmick rather than to be forced to do a character that According to some reports, you got to take it with a grain of salt that he pretty much said, this is stupid. And then that rubbed Vince the wrong way. And then he got booted out of it, which was like, that's kind of what he would have wanted to do is to not do this stupid gimmick. So maybe we see on SmackDown tonight, LA night, or maybe we get some other kind of change to that. You know, there might be changes that we see, but I don't think we're going to get like massive sweeping changes happening in the next two weeks or something. I do think that it's uh, a better means for a lot of other people and i'm more confident now that somebody like a johnny gargano can come back that's for sure yeah well like let's talk a little bit about that because i saw people immediately overreact and say oh gargano's gonna be at SummerSlam," and like i don't those are the kinds of things i don't expect you think that uh or at least people are thinking that he's gonna be seth rollins opponent yeah, I mean, yeah, like it was immediately like people were like, oh, they're going to do this thing with Gargano because Triple H responded to Rollins saying, I hear you. Hey, sucks that I don't have a match. And they were like, oh, I hear you. So people started thinking it might be that. Again, I don't think we're going to get that. I do think that, yeah, I think Gargano's going back there is more likely because WrestleMania is still a bucket list for him, you know? I think it's quite, way more likely now. It's quite funny that Seth was like putting that post out on Twitter when, in a kayfabe sense, he's the reason why he doesn't have a match with some of them. <laughs> I know, yeah. That's yeah. true. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I kind of... I think that a lot of people were speculating the Gargano thing because, yeah, that seems like an obvious like feel-good move that Triple H can do. But Gargano was, well, not appearing in real life, but uh, most recently appearing in Impact Wrestling, so. Yeah, but that, uh, at least according to Sean, Ross Sapp, that that was just a favor. They're not doing anything with him. I I know, but it's... uh, It is the first we've seen of him since then, yeah. Yeah, so it it is just an interesting thing that even if he does end up coming back to WWE in the future, it's like the Impact still got it first. Like that's a never <laughs> an impact cap. <laughs> They're gonna be like, you know, uh setting him up for the Hall of Fame and impact. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Try um, as that company might, they're still always gonna be the butt of the joke in so many ways. I no, I think Triple H he seems like he's in the right spot for himself. I hope that it it is a permanent position and it's not like, hey, why don't you take this on an interim basis while we playing out a sale or anything like that because mm. a lot of mainstream media outlets are speculating on the idea of, well, can they sell now? Are we getting ready for a sale? And so far they're denying it. And as we discussed previously, I don't really want to see it. Yeah. I don't want to see it either. 
So I'm hoping that this is that start of everything getting better and we're going to have to see. Um, as far as that goes for, you know, talking about people leaving and coming and going for different companies and stuff. Let's talk about Jonathan Gresham. So we didn't get a chance to talk about this quite yet. Gresham lost at ring of honor and Claudio is the new ring of honor champion. Great moment to start off the pay-per-view and everything. After that, it comes out that Gresham, well, okay, let's set it up a little bit like this. Uh, Gresham joins the Tully Blanchard Enterprises just, you know, a few weeks prior. And actually, was it the same week? Yeah, I'm thinking it. It was, week, it was two weeks before. Right? Two weeks before. So, you know, not too far away from when the pay per view happens, but they end up putting a thing on the pay per view, which, if you want to check out my thoughts, my immediate pay per view post show, uh, check that out. You've got the. Uh, Prince Nana coming out and just being like, hey, by the way, I've taken over Tully Blanchard Enterprises. And it's well, okay. That's kind of random. But after Gresham loses the title, it seems he's quit from the company and cursed out Tony Khan about the idea that why does he have to have a character and you know, there's plenty of other people who don't need to have a character and could just be a wrestler and why does that have to apply to him and everything like that. And it seems he's completely gone from ROH and AEW. He had deleted his Twitter account. I think he reactivated it now. What do you guys um, think about this situation? Well, I'm going to check on that Twitter situation because I don't think he reactivated. I think I know he's booked for uh, StarCast, but I think he might be done after. And we'll talk about our uh, predictions for StarCast. Yeah, like, I, I think it sucks, but I think he's done. Do you think done entirely, like just not wrestling anymore? No, he'll... he'll He'll come back eventually. I, but I think. I think. I think at least in the short term, he's going to take a break. Which is yeah. But it seems a bit odd, predominantly for the fact that he's got his own promotion that he started recently. He he uh, shut that Twitter down too. I think. Yeah, I think he's essentially what seems to happen is the whole situation with how Ring of Honor has been rehandled or his own character for, uh, as part of AEW just seems to have completely disillusioned him from pro wrestling, which is saying something really significant, really, because it's one thing to say, okay, this isn't working out for me. I'm going to go somewhere else. To the point where you want to actually just get out of wrestling altogether means that something, and, and we may never know the full details, or at least not for it in the short term, but something significant must have happened in the way that he was handled or the way that conversation with Tony Khan went down to to get him to a point where he's basically like, yep, yeah, no more. At least, like, for, for right now, just don't want to wrestle, don't want to do anything. It's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, concerning that they that it's reached this point. And again, there's probably fault on both sides. And yeah, it's somewhere in the middle. It's not just all on one side, but that's it usually is. what things are. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, of course. But it, it does raise a few eyebrows in terms of, okay, is, is this ring of honor thing really getting off the ground or is there going to be more problems involved with it? Cause we haven't really still haven't heard anything about, a television deal or any kind of streaming service or anything along those lines, or even a full roster of people that have signed Ring of Honor yet. So maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's just, again, part of the fact that he was going to be put with Tully Blanchard, then Blanchard walks or Blanchard or, or, or how, however that went down. Obviously we don't know if he walked or he was fired or they just came to a difference of opinion. The fact that he was wrestling first against Claudio rather than the main event and then having to lose the title and only getting a, a relatively short amount of time for the match as well. That probably rubbed him up the wrong way. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff that went wrong with the whole Gresham to AEW experiment. And I think that, yeah, after Starcast, he'll probably be done for a while, but he'll be back in a few months, I, I would imagine. I, he's I think still it's young, I'm sure, right? Yeah, he's in his early 30s, I think. He's still... He got is 34. Yeah. 
yeah, so yeah, early mid for early to mid thirties. So he's still got plenty of gas in the tank. He wrestles a style which doesn't involve many like high risk bumps or anything like Stein. So he could wrestle like that for a long time coming. He'll get offers. Impact will be interested. I'm sure in in a Triple H led WWE in terms of creative, I'm sure they'd be interested in him. You've got um, yeah, if you've got New Japan, he'd definitely be fitting in like their junior division really nicely. So yeah, he'll get offers. He'll either restart terminus or he'll do a lot of other stuff in the meantime i just think it's probably at this point safe to say it's highly unlikely we'll see him on a tony khan produced show in the Mm -hmm. very future yeah i mean there's also like nwa and just going around the indies could be a thing if he just wants to be like you know hey i'll pick up a check here when there i get the criticism and i get like, I, you know, I'm kind of of two opinions in the same kind of way. Like, I understand why if his problem is, why do I need to have a character? There's plenty of people who don't have characters. Why would that be an issue? But then I also go, yeah, but you know what? The first complaint is for the people that don't have characters and are just good wrestlers. People complain that they don't have characters. So it's like, you know, the big thing, Claudio was uh, in WWE for like a decade. And the only thing that was holding him back was he doesn't have a character. So it did feel a little bit to me like it was kind of maybe there is a little bit more of the, I don't want to drop the title. I like being the guy thing to it. Or maybe the way that this conversation went down could have been something that rubbed him the wrong way. And we just, you know, we don't know the verbiage of it or whatever, but like you said, Callum, it's not the best way to start things off for ring of iron or for the guy to be like, yeah, I'll drop the title and fucking leave. And, I'm I think not it's less coming of, back. It's not it's less to me about Ring of Honor and more like just the stories of Tony. God. And <laughs> you, yeah, God, just to be sure. And, and the people who do have issues. It's a real little bit just, of a recurring thing. Yeah, like it's it's a little concerning to me that whenever the rare wrestler does pop up. It's suddenly just like, yeah, and communication is terrible. And it, it just sort of feels like, Oh, there might be a lot of problems structurally here. It, it, would, make, it, 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 it would make sense about the case because he is trying to run to wrestling promotions, seemingly single handedly. He's also the director of a, Premier League football club and a, a NFL team as well. So trying to balance all of that stuff. I assume he's got other business ventures and other stuff that he's involved in as well. So he's probably got way too much on his plate and seemingly a reluctance to share a lot of that booking power because when he did that at the start of AEW's run, things like the Nightmare Collective and that Dark Order segment happened. And ever since then, he's basically said, yep, no one else can do this. I'm going to do it myself. And it must also be hard because since then, it's been almost AEW's gone from strength to strength to strength. But there does seem to be, if he's the one point of contact in terms of creative, obviously going through like trainers and other people to get to him. Christopher Daniels being another one, yeah. Yeah. I assume it would be quite frustrating for people if they can't see him and talk about their direction if they have any concerns. Um, especially for, and maybe this is a case with, like, obviously Gresham's not the only guy that said that. They spoke to Joey Janela and Marco Stunt saying similar things as well. So, and those people are out of the company. Maybe it's a case of there are certain people who lose favour or Khan isn't really thinking too much about. And right. that me- yeah, and that and that and that means they're. Uh, there's there, there's lack of communication there, whereas if it's someone who he has on a higher priority level, then maybe they can have more immediate access. So there's a hierarchy, and with that comes, uh, I won't say jealousy because it, it, I'm not saying they they're, they're wrong to think that way, but there will be some kind of envy or like disheartening about the fact that they're not at that level in terms of, okay, I want to talk to Tony Khan. Well, you gotta go through this guy, this guy, this guy. And then maybe eventually he'll talk to he'll talk to you if it, the situation warrants it. Especially because there's a lot of people that that was their biggest issue with Vince was that they didn't have 
more of an easy communication back and forth. And then when they go to Tony Khan and he's supposed to be like the guy for the wrestlers, then he still ends up having to be a boss and, you know, busy Again, and, I think and everything. A lot of it stems back to ultimately when you, when you present yourself as the people's company, that's going to blow back on you negatively sometimes because you're not always going to be able to deliver what the fans or the employees want Mm -hmm. at all times. Yeah. So, I mean, we haven't really heard anything too much outside of a little bit here and there. So you got to take everything with a grain of salt. You don't know exactly what's going on behind the scenes and all that stuff, but it doesn't seem like we're going to be seeing. It sucks for Tully. Yeah. I don't know about the Tully thing. That's really odd. Cause that, shouldn't necessarily have to do anything with Gresham. Gresham goes, Hey, I leave. They could just be like, okay, well then you're out, not Tully. So that's a different thing. Well, we don't know what the situation is. Maybe Tully's done. Maybe Tully just doesn't want to be in the wrestling business. Anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, we haven't so- seen him since then. It's not like he, you know, okay, well he left Tully Blanchard enterprises and started a new group or, you know, uh, well, you know, he popped up to, be ringside for this person, or, you know, I mean, we don't have any idea. Which, if so, like, what a what a waste of one of the greatest potential comebacks. Clay Blanchard had nothing to do with the wrestling industry for 30 years. And you could have had him really elevate some guys. He did some fun stuff with FTR, but that was it. The pinnacle was fucking miserable. Like, yeah, that really shit the bed, didn't it? Uh, Sean Spears, where the hell is he? Like, just just some stuff that I'm not too over the moon with, even if I thought that overall the Ring of Honor product on last Saturday was pretty good. All right, so let's uh, bounce back to completely unrelated topic <laughs> from what we were just talking about, but what the hell, why not? We know where WrestleMania 40 is going to be. Lincoln Financial Field in Philly. Which means that fires are going to start. The place is going to burn down because <laughs> yeah, that's what Philly gone? does. <laughs> it's just the uh, the typical thing. If uh, if a Philly team wins, they riot. If they lose, they riot. You know. But WrestleMania 40 should be a big deal. I am going to try to go for sure. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I don't know if I'll get tickets. I don't know if I'll go both nights. You know. I don't even know when the tickets go on sale, but I've already messaged people and been like, you, you were trying to go, right? You know, because <laughs> I need to wash that taste out of my mouth from WrestleMania 29. I need to, I've uh, never gone to a show with Caroline yet. So I want her to experience that. And of course, WrestleMania is WrestleMania. So it's like you know, the opportunity to go to a Philly WrestleMania instead of like flying out and spending three, four times as much money. Yeah, I'm going to try to take advantage of that as much as I can. And I've actually never been to Lincoln Financial Field either, despite it being yeah, 15 minutes away from my house for so many years. But um, I'm excited about that. I don't think there's really a whole lot to talk about necessarily for it, but hey, look, it's a thing, and that's cool. And if I do end up getting tickets for it or whatever, I'll let everybody know ahead of time, and we'll try to figure out if, you know, if anybody else is going that we'll meet up and do something fun. Um, Mania 40. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I have- I have some thoughts about this. First of all, they're calling it Mania 40, which I like, because I think not numbering it is stupid. But they're going to Philly, first time in 25 years. That's super cool. But I'm now of the opinion, and I'm sure I'll be the only one here, but I don't think they always need to run a goddamn stadium. You set yourselves up for failure that way because you don't have the roster that warrants stadium shows all the time. Is that is that just me, or, or do you guys feel the same way? I do, and I don't. I think them trying to do that makes perfect sense. And maybe within the next year, maybe we'll get more people on the roster that it'll be serviceable. It's not about the roster for me. It's the fact that the, um, the atmosphere in a stadium show is not as good when you're watching on television as an arena show is. So that that's too... Mm-hmm. That's the only thing I'd care about. I, just, I don't. I don't give a shit. But at, the, at this point in time, WrestleMania sells WrestleMania. You know, they could have like uh, all of their mid card essentially appearing on the show. People are still going to watch it because it's WrestleMania. They'll get some. I know we... They'll get some celebrity appear to to make up the numbers anyway. But 
yeah, so I I don't I see the reason why they do the big stadium shows. It's just more about the brand. But, but that's fine. Uh, so, I mean, that's made price. clear because you know WrestleMania's SummerSlam is happening this weekend. <laughs> yeah. And was it like, People? Was that uh, it was People Magazine? People Magazine. Yeah. yeah, Bianca Belair is gonna uh, continue her redemption story at WrestleMania SummerSlam. <laughs> And that's like, I, I get it. I do. I just think that, don't forget, you know, some really cool WrestleMania has happened in small venues. Austin Bread happened in the Rosemont Horizon. Um, Edge and Foley happened in the Rosemont Horizon. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you're basically saying, saying go back to the Rosemont Horizon. <laughs> happened in well, Madison Square Garden. I, I will say that the main reason for that is not because, well, it's the matches that happened. It's not the venue. Like, they would have mm-hmm. had that same match in a big stadium as they would have done in the small stadium. The only difference is the WWE at that point couldn't sell out a giant stadium. And yeah. I mean, we know that the main hook most likely for this upcoming WrestleMania is going to be the rock versus Roman reigns. But maybe by the time we get to WrestleMania 40, we'll have built up some new main event content. And maybe we get some kind of like, uh, you know, the Daniel Bryan situation going on for WrestleMania 30. That can be crazy. That that'll be ten years. Mm. Jesus Christ. I mean, to be fair, in a historical context, uh, the WrestleManias, the decade WrestleMania, should I say, the 10, 20, 30, and then presumably forty, is usually when the rest of the wrestler wins the ma- the main title. You had Bret in ten. You had uh, Benoit and Benoit at twenty, and then D- D- uh, Brian at uh, thirty. Yeah. So I assume this will be the year the Chad Gable wins the <laughs> championship. Hey, maybe it's going to be the Johnny Gargano year to call back be. from earlier. Could, yeah, could very I mean, it. I would argue that Cody fits more of a Brett mold than a John Cena mold. I disagree with that. He's a very good wrestler, but he is definitely of the sports entertainer variety than the wrestler wrestler variety. So, uh, WrestleMania 40 is something to keep an eye on. Another thing to keep an eye on, the new announcement from New Japan Pro Wrestling and Stardom, we're going to get an IWGP Women's Championship. Long overdue, right? Not really. Yeah, they just announced that they were like going to start integrating women. Yeah, I mean, it's like saying that, um, oh, why has WWE not had a Mer People Championship? Like, well, there's no mer people in WWE. There's no women in New Japan Pro Wrestling, so that's why. You know, somebody out there is going, "Why isn't there?" <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely there as a good uh, publicity exercise. I mean, realistically, they could just use Stardom's championships and just defended them on New Japan shows. Yeah, see, but the- I think they're they're doing this specifically to keep Stardom a separate the big entity. Belt stardom, like big belt at stardom and this will be the major championship for new japan with it being defended occasionally at some major stardom shows well from what i've seen of again maybe i'm completely off pace from what i've read about it but from what i could gather it was mainly would be used on stardom shows and new japan strong but not actually featuring on new japan shows my guess so i had read that they were going to Feature it occasionally at stardom shows. My guess is it's probably going to be mostly New Japan Strong. Probably get a spot at Kingdom as they continue to integrate women into Japanese cards because you know they're getting around to that. I think either way, it's a good thing. You know, I, I'm glad that they're making this move. I know that there are certain people in the wrestling community that just feel like this is the move. You know, it's about time, yada, yada. But I I think it's good. Makes more sense for the next Forbidden Door, right? Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah that would obviously help out in terms of making sure that some women can get onto the card. But I just, yeah, I'm, I'm just of two minds because I just don't feel like it's absolutely necessary to have beyond the fact that it makes New Japan seem a bit more progressive. But that's the that's the main reason. Yeah, but I feel like yeah, you just use the Stardom stuff. You you Stardom and New Japan might as well just be combined or be well, set kept as separate entities, but have like occasionally have 
some New Japan matches on major stardom shows and vice versa. It's like that's that seems an easy way to formalize the relationship a bit more. But I, either way, it it should it should be interesting to see who they decide to go with for the first champion. You, yeah, you guys it. are more tapped into that than I am, so you would have a better idea of who we'd see even in that range. Is there anybody that stands out? Is it like, oh, it's clearly Kyrie Sane or it's uh, I don't know, uh, Maki Ito or you know? Well, Maki Ito doesn't work for Stardom, so that would be unlikely to be the case. Where does she work? Uh, she's Tokyo Joshi Pro. Ah, I don't know how any of that shit works. <laughs> Well, wait. It, it, it's like it's like anything. It has there are different women's promotions in Japan. Yeah, yeah, but I, you know, it's, some of them are connected, like Stardom is kind of connected to New Japan, and then it's like, oh, this one is, and then you know, I mean, uh, well, do even just the, the way in you know America, it's like, oh, Impact people are part of ROH, but they came over and the AEW, so all this shit. That's why it's, you know, the urge of merch is so much better. Again, you need to stop that. It, you can't save the world by just everything being under one umbrella. You can't save the world, uh, but you can make a dent. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're looking at some of the... They'd want to have a big name win that first title, you'd imagine. Um, I think that there's good chances of people like Iwatani, Mayu Iwatani. Uh, uh, I'd probably say Siori, who's the current world champion, starting champion, could be potentially. You might look at Kari Hojo. Could look at Momo Watanabe. She's fairly well known. You could, I mean, who, who knows? In uh, by the time that show rolls around in November, Io Shirai might be back on the market. Mm. That'd, be, that'd be a good way to go about it as well. But you could also look at some AEW women. You, they have a working relationship with New Japan, which means that a lot of AEW women could be part of Stardom as well. You could look at some of the Japanese talent they have, but realistically, a lot of the Japanese talent they use don't wrestle for Stardom and wrestle for other promotions. But I don't think it's out of the question. You could see someone like her. Uh, Emi Sakura or um, Yuka Sakazaki yeah, or yeah, yeah, or Riho. Even, yeah, I was going to say maybe even Riho. But then you've got people like Jamie Hayter, who's well known in the Stardom side of things. Tony Storm did a lot of stuff for Stardom. Uh, Thunder Rosa, I think, has done stuff for Stardom. But yeah, they could just put one of those people because they have a bit more of a broader appeal, and especially if uh, the title is going to be defended a lot in New Japan Strong, it wouldn't make the worst decision in the world to have someone who wrestles frequently on American soil have the title. They have great names for their belt at Sad Stardom. The, the Future of Stardom Championship, the Goddess of Stardom Championship, <laughs> the Artist of Stardom Championship. You know, the, these are fun names for their titles, but as I look at their active roster, uh, just out of sheer ignorance, I have to say, Kyrie be a front runner in my mind, just because She's got the notoriety. Uh, Watanade and Yuri would be the major picks. Yeah, but it, it would at least give us uh, these people more exposure to the larger New Japan audience, which is good, which is a good thing. Yeah. Well, before we run through the TV recap stuff, we got one more uh, outside sort of thing to talk about, which is Starcast 5 and the Ric Flair's last match pay-per-view card. We're going to give our predictions for that. As I mentioned before, we are not currently planning on doing any kind of a post-show afterward because it's not necessarily a given that we're going to be watching it. But if that does end up happening on Sunday night, then you will you know, get a, an alert ahead of time if you are subscribed and if you ring that notification bell, that's one of the reasons why you should be doing that is because if that does end up happening, then you'll get that email that'll be like, hey, look, they actually did decide to go live for that. And of course, if you are doing all that, you should do the same things that you do on the YouTube channel that you would do for everything that you like. Hit the like button. It's kind of what it's there for. Press this uh, share button and pass that along to other people if you want to you know, pass uh, this podcast their way and be like, hey, check this out. You might be interested. Always love when I see on Twitter that somebody will be like, you know, recommend some podcasts to me and somebody will tag that in that. I'm always like, oh, that makes my day. And, um, you know, if you are in the range of uh, leaving your comments and stuff, you might as well click those buttons too while you're at it. So let's talk about that Ric Flair's last match card. Let's run this down. I have not actually looked at the card in a while so now there's 11 matches to it which the last time i looked there was like five so it's pretty interesting we got a bunkhouse battle royale 
Currently, the people that are announced for it are Adam Priest. Uh, there, there's going to be plenty of people, I'm sure, on this card that I don't actually know anything about. Uh, Big Demo, who, you know, from Killian Dane from WWE. Brian Myers, know him. Billy Ray, of course. Crimson. Oh, they're booking Crimson for this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't think that he was somebody that would pop back up. Crowbar, Gringo Loco, James Storm, Cal Harrow, Commander, Ricky Shane Page, Sin Bodhi. Oh, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Wolfie D and TBA. This is a group of people that I, there's a few I don't know, but hey, uh, I'm assuming that this is like a, a Bully Ray and a James Storm win. I don't know. Uh, front runner, definitely James Storm to me. Uh, I hope Jerry Lawler's in it. I really do. I hope that Jerry Lawler gets to wrestle on this card where we're just celebrating people wrestling because they can. And I think Lawler would be a good fit. I would love to see Dustin in it. But if he was to be in it, I would want him to win it because the bunkhouse was such a dusty thing. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Wolfie D, that's a, that's a fun name. <laughs> yeah. Um, Again, this card is comprised of a lot of different promotions, and this is a good way to start a show. You know, we always need that battle royal, that big man or not buffet. <laughs> the big man or not buffet, the small man buffet. <laughs> Who's your prediction, Gallum? Um, Out of the names that are currently listed, I'd say I'd probably go with Damo. But realistically we're just waiting for swoggle to get announced and then he'll probably win <laughs> yeah i hope not yeah, a few names on here that i don't know i don't know ricky shane page i don't know commander cal harrow gringo loco adam priest i, I know i've heard the name adam priest before but i can't you he's know, done think a lot of, of terminus stuff i'm sure he was doing some ring of honor stuff towards the end hmm. um the commander i can't think of at the moment but Ricky Champage was a huge name in GCW uh, a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, lo- lots of good names in this one. Then we got Red Narita versus Yuya Yamura. I know uh, that I've heard the latter name on AEW before, but I don't think I know Red Narita. Let me look at that page. I mean, they're both uh, they're both New Japan young lions. Young, yeah. young lions, yeah. So this was originally supposed to be Ren Narita versus Clark Connors, the uh, guy, who was the, <laughs> the random initial... replacement guy. Yeah, uh, who I think you uh, again. I wasn't. I don't recall yeah, because I wasn't on the uh, post show for that. I think you greatly underestimated how good he was in that match. But uh, it, it, uh, he's uh, suffered a um, a fairly serious injury, so he's going to be out for a little while. So they brought in uh, Uimura as a replacement, and the great thing about Young Lions matches is that they they know the fundamentals of wrestling so well, so you know this is going to be a good match. You're just not going to see anything that's like super spectacular or over the top because that's not that's just not how these guys work. So it's going to be the basically the epitome of solid wrestling. Hmm. I'll go Yamura. <laughs> I'll, I'll go Narita. I'll, yeah, I'll go Narita because he was the guy that was originally booked. So that's true. Yeah, fuck it, Narita. <laughs> like we got money riding on this. We got David Boy Smith Jr. against Killer Cross. That's pretty oh, cool. That's fun. That's that's good time. I mean, like literally less than a year ago, both men were signed to WWE. Yeah. This this should be a good match. It is it is quite interesting. I'm not uh. I'm not sh- sure which way they'll go with this one because it's two, two hoss like wrestlers that can do some good stuff. I think I'd lean towards Killer Cross, but I don't know why. I'm also leaning towards Cross, and my reason for why is I think Cross is more interested in his future in wrestling, whereas I think Davy Boy is just. Glad Along for the ride. Be, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, he's just glad to be there. And he can offer a lot to any promotion. And I think any promotion should try to sign him up. Um, but I'm going to go Cross. But I don't think Cross taps him out. I think Cross gets him with that, uh, that Lex Luger forearm from behind that he was doing. Yeah, I'm uh, definitely leaning more towards Cross here, too. 
and for that matter, echo the same statement. I hope that WWE picks up Davey Boy. Still don't know why they didn't. <laughs> you know, that was the whole thing where they bring him in and then also release him in like the same week. But yeah, crazy times. Uh, Von Erichs, Marshall Von Erich, and Ross Von Erich against the Briscoes. I have no clue who these two Von Erichs are, but look at that. We're getting a Von Erich thing again. I'm going to go with the Briscoes. I'd also go with the Briscoes, just given the name value at the moment, but boy, should this be fun. Yeah, definitely you would have the Briscoes win. So the um, the Von Erichs are the sons of Kevin Von Erich, who I think was the youngest member of the, the Von Erich family. Oh, he's the oldest. Oh, got that the wrong way around then. But uh, yeah, so I haven't seen anything of them that they carry that name. So hopefully, they're- oh, they're very good. Yeah, you guys don't watch a lot of MLW. They're they're pretty they're pretty good. They are, I think. The best, not that Von Erichs have come along recently, but they're, you know, they have the Von Erich spirit and it's all there. And I think that this should be a really fun match that I kind of wish was a bit of a bunkhouse in itself because they do good in that environment. Hmm. But are they WrestleLicious? No, that's Lacey Von Erich. She's WrestleLicious. <laughs> <laughs> haven't heard anything from her since she was doing those uh, random cons and causing a lot of problems. <laughs> we got the Wolves, Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards against Motor City Machine Guns. I mean, we've seen it. It's great. Fuck, like, good things are good. This is good. Do this. Do more of this. I'll go Shelly and Saban. I'd go with the Motor City Machine Guns as well. It's quite interesting that uh, they, because they promoted this on the latest episode of Impact, because, of course, they did. And it's quite weird because David Richards and Eddie Edwards a couple of weeks ago were feuding with each other. So yes. now they have to team together and they still had to try and make it make sense on impact. But that's And that's, that's why I think they're going to win. As I think, that's, I think the machine guns are going to win. Yeah, the machine guns should win this one. We got another tag team match. Rock and Roll Express, Kerry Morton and Ricky Morton against the Four Horsemen. <laughs> Brian Pillman Jr. and Brock Anderson. <laughs> they are just no, yeah, it's close enough, you know. Well, uh, Robert Gibson's gonna be there. And he could easily get in the ring if he wanted to. We've seen them. It's not like the Rock and Roll Express aren't teaming. Uh this sh- fun. Like, Rock doesn't get any chance to shine on AEW television. Brian doesn't get any chance to shine on AEW television. Uh and Ricky Morton is still going somehow. <laughs> How old is Ricky Morton at this point? Jesus. Let me look at that. In his 60s. I'm 65. Yeah. Good for him. I'll go uh, Pillman and Brock. I'm going Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, I'm going Rock and Roll Express. We got a four corners match. Right now, Jonathan Gresham is scheduled for it. We've got Alan Angels, Nick Wayne, and Konosuke Takeshita. Who's this been- match is going to slap. Wow. <laughs> That's a fucking match. Wow. Takeshita has been on AEW quite a bit. So I've seen some stuff from him and I've liked what I've seen. Uh, I don't know Nick Wayne. I know I've heard the name before, but I don't. Nick Wayne is 17 years old. And Nick Wayne. Oh, he's that guy. Yeah, he, yeah, he's the young, the young kid still in for AEW. He yeah. also just survived a, apparently a bomb threat on a plane. A what on a plane? Bomb threat. Oh, mm. that's not good. <laughs> Uh, Angels, of course, we know from Dark Order. I think Gresham from the story from earlier. <laughs> this um, this could be the best match of the night. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, there there are quite a few contenders for that actually. But the fact that even if this does end up just becoming a triple threat, if Gresham decides to not to fulfill this one, then it would still be a great match. I mean, Takeshi is awesome. I think he's been such a breath of fresh air whenever I've seen him on AEW. And then Angels is great and is doing well in impact and i think i'm sure he in an opportunity like this he'll take it with both hands nick wayne is like as soon as you actually watch a nick wayne match you just know that this guy is going to be a pillar of professional wrestling like 10 years from now hmm. like, he's that he's already so so good he's tall and he's obviously very young he's still growing i think he's probably going to be probably about six two six three by the time he ends up 
stopping growing. And yeah, he, he definitely needs to put on more muscle at the moment, but he's in terms of just bell to bell psychology and ring work, he's light years above his age. I mean, he, uh, last match that I did see all the way through of his was the match that he had with Will Ospreay a couple of uh, months back. And that was, again, it's hard to uh, not have a good match against Will Ospreay. But even so, that match was just insanely good. I'm going to have to try to check him out. I haven't seen any of his work. I have no idea who's going to win this. Because uh, realistically, they could all win. Because there's nothing, there's nothing on the line. I would have said Gresham initially before all this stuff came out. And if he's not going to wrestle anymore, then there's not really much point of him winning. So, and Takesh is going back to Japan after this. I'm going to go with Nick I, Wayne. I, I think there's a very good chance Nick Wayne could win this match. Um, if Gresham is wrestling, it's Gresham. Even if, if he's not going to wrestle anymore after this. Yeah, and then I think, I think that'll be his one talk. If not, it's Nick Wayne. That's uh, the fun thing, is to give it to the kid, you know? Yeah. You pin now on Angels. It's not going to kill Angels or anything. So it's funny that they're calling that a four corners match, and then we, they're calling this other one a four way match. <laughs> I don't know what the difference between that is. But there is a four way match against, uh, or against uh, Bandito, against Laredo Kid, against Ray Phoenix, against Taurus. I don't know Taurus. Uh, okay. So he's referred to as Black Taurus in uh, Impact as well as in other places as well. Uh, he, when he's in Impact, he's part of the Decay stable with Crazy Steve and Rosemary. But he's like a really big base of a guy. Like he's not a typical luchador. He's huge. Mm. But Bandito, the Raider Kid, and Ray Phoenix are all part of that luchador mold, and they're probably three of the best at doing that style in the entire world right now. I think they did this match recently on some kind of big AAA show. So they're basically just doing a repeat of this one. And I haven't seen that match, but boy, at least from uh, Dave Meltzer's accounts when he was running down this match, basically thinks that this match is going to be the one that steals the show. So I'm looking forward to this one. And I'll say the Phoenix wins, because why not? Yeah, I would agree. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of flippy dippy. And Phoenix, because he's on AEW. Yeah, I'm going to go with Phoenix as well. I think that that just makes more sense. But if Bandito won, it wouldn't be the you know craziest thing in the world. Won. I mean, if any of them won, I wouldn't really care. But it's like it's a, But I'm just hoping that it's a good showcase for that style of wrestling. There's a three-way for the Impact Knockouts World Championship. Rachel Ellering and Deanna Peraza are challenging Jordan Grace. I have, of course, not followed anything with Impact, so I don't know if this is one of those things where it's like, okay, all the momentum is saying that Deanna is going to win it back it's or something. Out of, it's out of nowhere. What do you mean, out of nowhere? Uh, like, just, just there, no match. setup whatsoever? Yeah. Uh, then there you go. Jordan Grace retains. <laughs> yeah, well, Jordan Grace, they're building up a match between Jordan Grace and Mia Yim for the Knockouts Championship at, uh, what's it called, Emergence? That's the name of the next big show, right? I yep. believe that, yeah. So I think it's unlikely that she drops the title here. She can pin Rachel Ellering, that just protect Perazzo a little bit. And yeah, because Perazzo's fighting for the tag titles at Emergence as well. So it'd be very unlikely that she won the title when Rachel Ellering isn't signed to Impact at the moment. So that would be very, very surprising if she won the title. So I think that, uh, oddly enough, you don't see a lot of people uh, getting up in arms about the fact that this is the only women's match on the show. Hmm. Well, they're a little worried that something bad might happen in the main event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I guess they can't focus on that part of it, but it just seems a bit odd that when people like complain, rightly so, about the way that AEW like seem to pigeonhole a lot of their women into a small segment, a, a, a card comes on like this with one women's match, and everyone just seems to brush it off. I guess they like to get mad at the things they like to get mad at. That's true. Two more matches that are on the card. We have a singles match for the Impact World Championship. Jacob Ratu is challenging Josh Alexander. I would I assume mean, that it's going to stay the same, but I don't know. It's the same. In a perfect world, it would put it on Fatu and let Fatu own Impact. But he signed to MLW, and Alexander signed to Impact, and he's building towards a match with Shelly 
at Emergence, so it'll be on uh, Alexander, but I want to see this match. Yeah, again, I think this will be another really great showcase. I'm not super familiar with a lot of Fatih's work, but from what I gather, he's very, very good, and I know how good Josh Alexander is. So even though the result is pretty much in zero jeopardy, I think it should still be a very good match. And then we've got the main reason that this is all happening. Ric Flair's retirement match again. This is his third. Well, third when you count like, you know, okay, I'm old enough that I'm going to retire. You count more matches of like, this is the last time we're going to see him because he's just going to be a general manager or you know, he's lost to like an Eric Bischoff and fired or any of those kind of things. Then you're yeah, then fucking, like 10. Yeah, don't hold on to them. But it's like his title victories, okay? He's held like twenty two of them, but they only count. <laughs> yeah. But Ric Flair is teaming with Andrade against Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. And I saw that parking lot video. <laughs> that was <laughs> fucking terrible. Oh, that's my surgery. Oh my god, the surgery line. And like Jeff Jarrett's like, oh stop, Jay, stop, stop. And then he's just kinda like, fuck you, Jarrett. And then he's like, okay, well then fuck you. Well, well now in fairness, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett did say, Stop, Jay, get off of him. And he tried to help Rick Flair up, and Rick Flair said, Fuck off, Jarrett, I'm tired of you and your old man. Yeah, and then that okay. immediately makes him go from, hey, don't beat up the old timer to you know what? I guess I'm gonna beat him up too. This is so stupid. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I mean, it is quite a, a bizarre match to put together. And it makes sense on the surface because Jay Lethal's been the guy that's been training with Ric Flair this, to get him in quote unquote ring shape for this match. So it makes sense that he would be the guy who's the safest one to put alongside Ric. Jeff is. A safe pair of hands and adds a bit of a legend factor to this. Andrade and obviously has the familial connection to Ric Flair, so yeah, this is the match that you put together. Let's and talk about it a little bit, yeah. though. Like, let's let's really let's talk about this. I mean, do we it's have Ric to? Flair's last match. <laughs> this is supposed to be Ric Flair, Ricky against. Ric Flair and FTR against Ricky Steamboat and the Rock and Roll Express. That didn't happen. For a multitude of reasons. Um, then it got changed to, I don't know, it might be a tag match with Andrade. This is what they landed on. But then you got to think in the media, you've got Charlotte Flair saying, yeah, I had to tell him not to do a dive to the outside because he wanted to do it. And I had to tell him, no, you didn't need to do it in your heyday. Don't do it now because enough of our guys that are young miss the dives. So... Now, that's a thought that Ric Flair wanted to do a, a, at least a vaulting body press, if not a suicide dive. Um, Jeff Jarrett is wrestling here, which is something in its own right. And honestly, is there any way in the world that this match can be good? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think this is going to be really bad, like deceptively bad. Okay, you have to imagine that at least three quarters of this match will be fine. Yeah, but we're not coming for Jay Lethal and Andrade. I'd love to see them work well, on the Wednesday point. night. Well, that's the point, isn't it, though? Because you know that these, those, those three of those four guys can still work and still go, and the, but and everyone is coming to see the fourth guy. So it doesn't matter if he's bad; they're still just there to see him. So realistically. You say, anyway, this match could be good. I don't think there's a no way this match could be bad. Uh, I see your point. Like, because even if it is bad, no one will treat it as if it's bad. Uh, so. I see your point. And fan reaction does account for something. It, it's just funny to me when you've got names like The Undertaker saying to Sports Illustrated, look, I wish him the best, but I don't want to see this. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm certain. But I'm sure certain a lot of people said that about pretty much the last, like, ten Undertaker matches as well. Oh, certainly. <laughs> I think this is going to be a lot of smoke and mirrors. Uh, we'll, yeah, I had it in my head, too. We'll see, we'll see Flair bleed a gusher. 
Oh, he's going to do that, practically walk into the ring. Yeah, I know. But, and, yeah, he'll just do the old classic spots, like, that he can do. He'll put someone in the figure four, they'll tap out, and everyone will go home happy. That's basically, that's just all you need for this match. Everything else that goes on is just a much of a much this, really. It, it the rest of the card, the strength of a lot of the matches on this card should more than make up for the fact that Ric Flair is trying to wrestle in his 70s and probably won't go as well as he imagines in his head. So what do we see more of, Ric Flair's blood or Ric Flair's tears? I thought you were going to say Ric Flair's ass as well. <laughs> well we're gonna, I'm probably going to see that too. I uh, think we're going to see more blood than tears. Because it's just going to be uh, like mixing together in some weird, bloody crimson mask combination. Yeah, right, I mean, jo- blood is more visible than tears. Right, so it's pretty more likely. Jokes aside, I do feel really bad when he's doing interviews. Like for one night, for one more day, I get to be myself. Mm-hmm. Like you could just tell that everything he is is wrapped up in Ric Flair, and that's heartbreaking in a lot of ways. You know, because I went back this morning, actually, and I watched the Shawn Michaels send off the the segment on Raw. And that's damn near perfect. And it's just like it's so heartbreaking that he had nothing else to hold on to that. It just became he needs to be Ric Flair. So I hope he gets everything he needs out of this. I really do. Yeah, it's a shame that there wasn't enough closure then for him to just be like, all right, that's it for sure. Instead of going to Impact and fucking around and, you know. Well, we uh, we will talk more Ric Flair coming up because we most likely are going to, for this next week, do Superstar Scores Ric Flair, which would be pretty oh. interesting. We haven't done that. And uh, that's something that, you would think would be like a benchmark person, but we just you know, never got around to it. We've done a bunch of these and there's plenty, plenty of people that we haven't gotten around to. So superstar scores, Ric Flair coming up next week and then, you know, carrying on with some of the other things, but let's go back and talk about some TV content kind of, um, round things out show by show. We talked quite a bit about Monday night raw leading up to the SummerSlam predictions, but going back and just, you know, reiterating some of those things. We had the Logan Paul stuff. We had the bloodline stuff, all promos setting up a series of matches that really don't matter. You know, McIntyre beats theory. It sets up another thing with, uh, Lashley and Here McIntyre. An hour. And, yeah, this was kind of a waste. Um, but again, it might lead to maybe something with McIntyre being the person that can screw Theory out of cash again. We don't know. We'll have to see. They did this whole Rey Mysterio 20 year celebration thing that led to the Mysterios beating Judgment Day. And then, hey, not 22 year. Did I say 22? Yeah. Yeah, 20 year. Uh, I don't know why I said 22 then. Uh, Mysterios and Judgment Day are going to have another match. It's no DQ. We've talked about why we think that's the case. They had the Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch promo segment, you know, typical pre pay-per-view setup of lots of promos, lots of video packages, that kind of thing. Alexa Bliss is going to be trying to fight for that championship and she beat do drop. That was just a thing. You got impulsive TV, that stupid segment with all the balls and, you know, continuing to talk about how Marisa, I guess, can't pronounce the word genitalia. And that's supposed to be funny. And why? This is exactly the type of content that I'm hoping the Triple H goes, yeah, no more of that shit. I think Triple H is fond of dick humor, given his history. I would hope that he is fond of our sponsors for this episode of Mindscaped. <laughs> if you're talking about making sure that you uh, have giant balls or small balls or anything like that, and you want to groom them the best way possible, then pick up something from Manscaped because you got the lawnmower, you got the ball deodorant you got the ball toner all these different products that are going to help you make sure that you've got the smooth sack summer going on <laughs> and if you are checking something out over on manscaped go and use that promo code smark s-m-a-r-k get 20 percent off and free shipping on whatever it is that you pick up we've of course been talking about this for a year now of all the different benefits that these different products have for you yeah whether it's something as simple as the 
advanced skin safe technology that makes sure that you're not going to be dicing everything up down there or if it's just the smells that smell really great which if uh if my wife was not asleep behind me right now i would get her to attest to that maybe we'll do that in the next uh plug but you can also be sure that when you're picking up something like the razors or everything that you're going to get high quality stuff there and you know anything that you do get that promo code is going to work for that so consider picking something up and making sure that you are well kept for the summer because it is freaking hot out no matter what day it is no matter where you are everything's just a heat wave so you're you gotta smell good you gotta be nice and clean pick up something from manscaped manscaped.com promo code smark 20 percent off free shipping pick it up even if you're the miz that's right smooth sack summer not swamp sack summer exactly smooth sack just- summer is the way to go <laughs> And just like on Raw, with Manscaped, your balls are no laughing matter. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> then we got the Roman Reigns and Usos match and all that. I don't think there's really anything on Raw that sticks out that we so, talked about before that would, you know, that our opinions have changed about, right? I do wanna do wanna credit them once again for not having people wait in the ring for fifteen minutes true. before their matches. Good for them. <laughs> Keep that up. <laughs> now in NXT we got a couple things where Zoe Stark had a promo, you know, we're going to set up a whole idea about that. She is going to fight Mandy Rose for the NXT women's championship at the next TV special, which is going to be called heat wave, which is an old ECW pay-per-view. So they're bringing that back for the longest time. They were using heat wave as their live event tour, just, you know, the tour prior to and leading up to SummerSlam. So I think that that's perfectly fine. I still wish though, Instead of Heatwave, that they would have gone with Bash at the Beach. I'm a little bit disappointed with that. But that's coming up in a couple weeks, and JD McDonough is going to fight Braun Breaker for the title as well. So, hey, look at that. Heatwave. Kind of neat. My guess is the winner of the False Canary match next week between Sosakoa and Von Wagner should be the next challenger for Braun Breaker. Because I don't think McDonough's going to win. I'm kind of uh, thinking that there might be a possibility that McDonough wins. Funny enough. Just to give it back to Braun? No, because I think that Braun may come up to the main roster. I don't think he's ready. I mean, I wouldn't make that call, but I, I'm I'm starting to think that McDonough might be one of those options that they might go with. We know that they like him. Triple H is going to be making that call, so wouldn't shock me. I don't think he's going to win, but... Yeah, we'll talk about that when we get into our predictions, I guess. Um, what about those? Just the the heat wave thing. You guys think about that? I like the heat wave name, right? Like it's it's better than spring breaking. Yeah, I mean, not you much. <laughs> it's worse than that, you know. Spring breaking. Ugh. Not NXT great balls of fire. <laughs> well, I mean, if those great balls of fire were a thing, they should check out Manscaped. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, I'm fuck. <laughs> Gal, any thoughts on Heat Wave? It's a nine. You guys I agree thought. that Bash the Beach would be a little bit cooler? I probably do. Cool I, I, I kind of think that um, with any sort of name, it's just that I don't really care what a show is called as long as it's good. Yeah. So, like, it could be called, the, it could have the greatest name ever if the show's a part of shit. Like, I like the name Dismember to, December to Dismember. Shit show. Watch again. <laughs> I uh, I didn't like the name Great Balls of Fire. I remember that being a pretty decent show. Yeah, I I remember I my I look very fondly on that Great Balls on my Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> You're here for a sir. Um, what about the the cool news of hey they got the tag titles out of the trash and they're just sort of moving on and immediately crowning new champions. Yeah, so if anybody missed it, Alundra Blaze comes over with a trash can to a Roxanne Perez interview where Roxanne's talking about how the champions deserve, uh, the the titles deserve to have champions. (laughs) And Alundra Blaze gives her the trash can so she can take the belt out of the trash can. And of course, later on, uh, toxic attraction or like you know how about you just give it to us and she's like no you're gonna have to fight next week for him or whatever and it's going to be the fatal four way that's currently set up which just seems so like man you gotta rehab this division it's the same two members of toxic attraction that have held the, tw- the titles twice before 
it's Casey and Casey who perpetually keep losing these things. They're winning this one. Ulyssa Leon and Valentina Ferois, who are friends just with Sanka. They're friends with they're, Sanka. What was that? <laughs> yeah, Sanka's just kind of like, you know, hey, you know, win the titles. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Stupid cell. And uh the other team is somebody I'm blanking on. Paxley. Oh, that's whatever. Nivy and I on Tatum Paxley, yeah. So the two people who at first Tatum Paxley was annoying Ivy Nile, then suddenly Ivy Nile is like, you know, actually I kinda like you and you know, you're an honorary member of Diamond Mine and whatever. <sighs> I mean, look, it's better than keeping the titles in the trash, I guess. But I was really kind of hoping that maybe they would just get rid of the belts and do the cross branded three tier thing or something again, or maybe just get rid of them entirely because they don't know what to do with them. It's really stupid that they decided to ha- have this whole Corey Jade and Roxanne Press thing just to get rid of the belts like that and then crown new champions. But I can't imagine any of these four teams are really going to do anything with them. If Toxic Attraction wins, it's just the status quo. You'll uh you'll see Leon and Valentina. They're not winning this. I mean, come on. They're just hey, to fill up hey, time. Hey. Casey hey. and Casey could win, but I kind of am leaning a little bit more towards Niall and Paxley, funny enough. I'm leaning towards Casey and Casey. It's it's time. Time. Like they've been a team since black and gold. Like just put the belts on them already. I'm glad that they're doing anything with the belts, though. For real, I'm more hopeful now that the situation will get sorted on the main roster, given who's in charge. I, I hope to see a resurgence for the women in this company. Likewise. Tell me, do you care at all? I mean, not really, but I'll give the prediction <laughs> anyway. Um I'm I'm more intrigued by uh, Alundra Blaze's spider sense of whenever she seems to always <laughs> know when a title title belt is in the trap, <laughs> so she can appear and rescue it from that uh, that circumstance. She was bitten by a radioactive trash can <laughs> a couple of uh, years ago, uh, but I think that yeah, I think I'm actually going to go with Ivy Nile and Tate and Paxley as well, just because I think they like the odd couple motif and. It seems like either way, the long-term feud for the titles appears to be between Paxley and Niall against Casey and Casey. So one of those teams will win the titles and then they'll feud with the other one over the belt. I think we're going to get Casey and Casey losing and they're going to officially turn heel. Yeah, that makes sense. Just be like, if, God damn it, we can always God, keep though, losing. If wins. Toxic Attraction win again, just... Just move them up to the main roster and call those the women's tag team titles. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, other things that happened throughout this, we were starting a feud with Ariana Grace and Indy Harwell. I don't think there's really too much to break down there. Um, oh, they're doing it really f- with Ariana. Is, yeah, is it really a feud? They just, had, they just got in each other's face in the show and then had the match and then it was over. I'm assuming that they're going to keep doing it. I will give credit to this little moment. They had a little backstage vignette thing with Wendy Chu waking up on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> no, damn it. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. That, that was not the best women's segment on the show. <laughs> no, it was not. The best women's segment was Kiana James. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Kiana that James was- is complaining about Nikki the Lions and, you know, the way that she dresses and uh, the representation that she is bringing to the brand and everything. <laughs> You're still that big. Yeah. It's basically, it's basically an opportunity for her to cut a promo over the top of some really provocative pictures of Nikita Lyons. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I mean, they know what they're doing because she went to the beach the other day and posted pictures on Instagram with Nikita across her butt. So <laughs> they're definitely going to use that stuff. I think it's good. That's three. I'm sorry. That was like. There's more than three because they got uh, Mandy and Saray next week. They were talking, and Cora Jade is seemingly feuding with Roxanne and Zoe Stark. So I feel like, yeah, there's some action in this women's division, which is fantastic. And Schism's still going for Cameron Grimes. That's the thing. 
Yeah. They're so creepy. Whatever <laughs> it is, they're doing a good job of it. Cause creepy. Oh, that Alba Fire and Lash Legend feud is continuing too. Yeah, <laughs> look at all these feuds in the women's division. You got to give them credit for it. <laughs> Switching over to Dynamite and rounding things out here. Also, the, there's a tag team title match next week along with the other tag team title match along with the false can anywhere of Solitskoa and Von Wagner. Packing it. Enough, and of course, on the next UK, we already had spoilers, so yeah, whatever. But Fight for the Fallen took place. Dynamite. We had uh, some interesting things happen here and there for that, too. John Moxley retained the interim world title over Roosh. Uh, Anna Che cut a promo talking about why she joined Jericho Appreciation Society and, you know, fully turning heels if she wasn't already heel already. Ricky Starks retained the FTW title over Dan House. And you skipped over the fact that uh, Jericho and Moxley are fighting for the title in two weeks. Uh, it's, yeah, Moxley to retain. There you go. <laughs> well, we're uh, going to break it down. That's all I'm saying. True. We're gonna yeah, break it down. true. Um, Quake at the lake. Quake at the Quake lake. lake. That's all right. Yeah. Um, after the Danhausen match, Starks, who has been doing a lot of like babyface stuff lately, ends Reason up saying, uh, "Hey, you know, I want to have another match." And Hook comes out and beats him for the title, and Starks shows him some respect, and eventually gets turned on by Powerhouse Hobbs. So it, there goes Team Taz entirely. <laughs> I mean. Uh, yeah, everything you're kind of doing all things in one shot here. Everything they did with Ricky Starks in this episode was absolutely masterful. Big fan so, of it. Yeah, I mean, he has the match with Dan and so he does get a victory on the show. They do that nice little video package for him as well. And having lose the title to Hook, which is great. Hook has his first title. He can do stuff with the FPW title. It's his dad's belt, so it's like if anybody's going to need to have that belt, he's the one that should be holding it. Yeah, absolutely. And then you have Ricky cut a really great babyface promo. The crowd really get behind him. And then you have Hobbs turn on him. And that gives him mega heat. So you've already got a few that you'll probably build towards all out between those two. Helps elevate both of them as singles guys after they've been in the tag team division for the last couple of months. Yeah, I think this is just all really, really good stuff. Master all across the board, I'm a big fan, yeah. Like Hook winning the FCW title was great. He's got his dad's belt. I hope that means more Hook. Uh, Ricky Starks got a great promo about how this is his time now. And he gets turned on by Hobbs, who's also going to do wonderful things. Uh, great, great segment. And part of me, of course, because uh, I'm a child of the 90s. <laughs> immediately after he won that title i was thinking you know taz creates this belt and he ends up giving it to brian cage turns on him stark ends up winning it whatever so it's not in taz's possession anymore but the hook brought it back <laughs> i ain't telling you no lie sammy guevara beat dante martin who seems like he might be injured that sucks yeah knee yeah, injury yeah it seemed like he yeah whoever his knee injury just just an ankle but uh yeah, he did. He was obviously going a little bit uh, weary in that match, and seen on crutches afterward too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the most interesting aspect of it, obviously, the match itself was good, but the interesting aspect is the they seemingly will be building at all out a match between uh, Ruby Soho and Eddie Kingston against Sammy Guevara and Ty Conchi. That seems like what I think that the destination will be for all out. Although currently the destination is unknown. Uh, this is good. I like I like Conchi and Guevara together. I like that Anna Jay's with them now. I think she, in that little whiny promo, reminded me so much of early Stephanie mm. that I was I was kind of into it just because like she had the perfect whiny heel voice. And I think this will be good for everybody. Yeah, she didn't really seem to be that great of a fit with the current incarnation of Dark Order as it was. She was just sort of there. So keeping her with Taikanchi, you got this tag team that you can go with. It freshes up her character by having her turn heel. I'm totally down for it. Let's talk about that Jungle Boy promo. <laughs> so it started off slow. 
but then he but then he called her Christian a pussy and then it all just then he was off to the races. And I love how personal this is. Yeah, really. I mean he's talking about his divorce and then uh, I didn't know Christian had been divorced. I didn't know that either. Um and he's yeah, saying he's got a small that. dick and that's the reason why he's <laughs> the divorce and he winks at the camera, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like the fact that like they, they bring it back to oh he cost him the money with thick throwing him out of the battle royal. And yeah, that's because he has to be, he's a bit cast strapped because he's paying his wife for the divorce. And I, I do like the little call me sign as well. That's just great. Just a call back to what uh, Christian said about uh, Jungle Boy's mom. So that, that's great. And yeah, I love the line of the turtlenecks and the small dicks. That's, it just, he showed a lot of personality and character in this promo, which is mm. what you really want to see from Jungle Boy at this point because you know he's got the wrestling down. You just need to have that force of charisma behind him as well. And I think he's starting to show signs that that's developing. There was a sign behind him in the crowd. Somebody was holding up that would say, and uh, for God's sakes, he's a jungle man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the most interesting thing, again, with this aspect is what 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 is happening with Luchasaurus? Because seemingly they decided to tell the story that... The reason why he sided with Christian is to make sure that Jungle Boy is the only would be the first guy to get his hands on Christian, which doesn't make any sense because Christian's fighting Matt Hardy next week. Yeah, so <laughs> that's already already that plan has failed. I think that we're still, I think we're seeing a double cross coming it all out. I think that Luchasaurus, because Luchasaurus is still wearing the black gear, he hasn't gone back to the green. I think that Christian is masterminding, has basically told Luchasaurus that, okay, when Jungle Boy comes back, try and pretend to be back by his side. But I know and you know that we're going to take him out, and this will hurt him even more to think that his best friend did was by his side and then eventually turn him again. This will be the thing that crushes him. So I think we're going to see Luchasaurus turn on Jungle Boy all out. Do you think he stayed there as Luchasaurus? Or do you think he takes out the mask at some point? I think I think he stays as Luchasaurus. I think I think if he's got if he's got this dark persona to him, I don't think there's any need to change the to change the setup. Um, I, I can see that. Great promo, great, uh, great fire back from Christian, who basically said, I'll, "I'll just murder you," like. It went from, you're, you're a divorced pussy with a small dick, and Christian responded with, I'm going to murder you. And you know, yeah, I'm going to kill you and bury you next to your father. Yeah, like, Alex. We're literally one week away from uh, Jungle Boy uh, surfboarding a uh, coffin like the big show. Did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you want to dig that out, but at this point, it's been a few years. Might be a lot. Yeah, dig um, it up. Good choice of words. <laughs> Well, to be fair, in the Big Show's case, his father had died well before they did that angle as well. So, <laughs> well, fair point. <laughs> um, great, great shit here. I, I think Christian's doing some of the best work of his career, which is crazy. But like, he's really tapped into it as a character. A poor Matt Hardy, who he's wrestling next week, who had his whole run derailed. Mm. The two-on-one handicap match followed that. Swerve Strickland beat Mark Sterling and Tony Nice. Keith Lee got taken out by Josh Woods. I guess the payoff here being, hey, Josh Woods is here. Hmm. Yeah, Thunder Rosa retained the AEW Women's World title. That was the thing. What did you think of it, Callum? Uh, it was okay. Like, from, from all accounts, I didn't actually watch their... Uh, the Japan match from start to finish because I think they showed it live on Dark. I think I watched well, live on Dark. That, one. But, that but, one was better. Yeah. So yeah, by all accounts, that one was better. This was a bit clunky in places. Yes, sir. And, and, and the crowd didn't seem to care because they have no idea who uh, Yamashita is. So. Yeah, I I really like it was fine, and then when it got clunky, it fell apart. Mm. Like, I did not like it after a certain point because Rose is just waiting. First of all, she took a kick to the gut, crumbles to her knees at first, and then randomly flatbacks, and then sits up and waits for a good, legit 25 seconds 
to be hit with a kick from uh, Yamashita. And it was just, it wasn't for me, but I am glad they had got to have the match. I honestly skipped the match. It was one of the ones. I didn't watch the Sterling match either. I was just kind of like, all right, well, you know, I don't want to dedicate too much time to it. We get an Ooh, opportunity to skip. Who this man? Who him? <laughs> If I get an opportunity to skip a lot of things, I, I skip because <laughs> I watch way too much wrestling as it is. So I didn't actually see uh, the full of the Daniel Garcia and Brian Danielson match either. But you missed out. That is something that I, if I get an opportunity, I'm going to go back and check out because that seems like that was one that it's worth watching. And it's a it, star making performance kind of for Garcia because Garcia won. Yeah, this is the this is the big moment where. This is the turning point for Garcia as a single star. I think, I mean, it's it's still going to be time coming because he. I don't think he's winning one of the titles anytime soon. But it does. It's his biggest win over one of their big stars. But it was Brian's return, so people just assuming, okay, he's fighting Daniel Garcia. Carries over from the Jericho Appreciation Society feud. He'll get a victory and then he'll move on to whatever's next. But no, he lost to Daniel Garcia and. I think that they could have a rematch at All Out. I'd be totally down to seeing a rematch at All Out. And, I, yeah, I just think Brian is so good at basically everything. But one thing that he is best at is making people feel like, should I be scared watching this match? <laughs> because he was acting like he was concussed from start to finish in that match. In, like, and... It's terrifying because we know that that's that's dangerous for him. He's already he just came back from a concussion, so we don't want. And he's had plenty of those over his career, and we know well where that ended him up in WWE for a long period of time. So he tugs on your heartstrings more than pretty much any professional wrestler. Basically, it's him and Kingston do that more than basically anybody. And I, yeah. You, you can't help but be somewhat nervous that you're like every time you're watching him wrestle the way that he's wrestling that you're watching it for the last time and as long as he does remain healthy that's going to be the like an absolute pivotal part of it the rest of his career but yeah this match was awesome yeah I mean first of all it was a good match before the drama but when he gets the DDT on the concrete and he's bleeding and suddenly he's woozy and like everything sort of stops for a while and as Callum said you just genuinely always fear for this man's life it was it was really really well done I could have done without the hand of Jake Hager coming up from under the ring to help Garcia win I think the story that he took so long to apply the, the label lock was enough to make Garcia get to the ropes. I think that was enough. And you could have found another way into the sharpshooter. But great for Garcia. Good for Danielson. This is one of the better episodes of Dynamite that I've seen in a few weeks. And I just think everything on the show was done well. To round out the last we did not discussion talk about point, the trios titles. that on. is that is what I'm going to get. Yeah, is uh, they announced that those trios titles that we've been, you know, kind of waiting to get an official confirmation for for uh, you know a couple of years now at this point, it is set for all out. The tournament will conclude then. We don't know anybody who's in the tournament or anything that goes along with that, but that's something over the course of the next few weeks that'll play out. So we are going to get trios champions at all out which makes me immediately gravitate towards is this where we get the young bucks and either page or omega against cole omega. and red dragon yeah that's i think it's young bucks omega against uh undisputed era i disagree i think it's young bucks page against cole and red dragon i think that that's probably where they're gonna go more to i think that uh Maybe Omega's not necessarily ready yet. And Paige isn't really doing anything else. And they're teasing the whole, like, you know, uh, the friendship coming back into play and everything. I don't think it's going to be the Young Bucks and Brandon Cutler. Let's put it that way. Um, I, I don't well, I think, think that uh, that Paige is going to team with members of Dark Order, for instance. I think no. they are going to go with Paige and Dark Order. 
because I, I just think that if you have the trios, I think this is a great way to introduce Kenny. We know Kenny's on his way back. There's a lot of different ways they can go here, which is great. Because honestly, I'm fully expecting Adam Cole to act as though he's it's going to be the super click winning the trios titles before he gets to put up. No, no, no. I'm going with with Bobby and Kyle because there's so much you can tell here. And but there are they, still other options that are going to be in the tournament. Like I would assume the House of Black is probably going to be involved. I would assume that we're going to get some kind of best friends involvement in the the tournament. You Black know, Combat Club. Yeah, BCC. You got the possibility of maybe even teaming up some people just at random. You know, just kind of hey, these three doing people it on Rampage. I have to assume that Sat um, Sanjay and Jay will be. In the tournament as well. I mean, I mean, let's let's think about it. So, how many how many teams are we expected to be in this tournament? Eight, sixteen. I, I would assume eight. probably eight would be the max. Well, I, I think they could probably do more than that. So, you got let's say it's Young Bucks and some combination of either Kenny or Paige. Then you have the Undisputed Elite, or or whatever they end up calling themselves when they're not part of the elite. I think that the undisputed originals was what they were called at one point. Yeah. Uh, I think they'll stick with either undisputed elite or they do have that Paragon trademark. Yeah. True. You've got uh, best friends, orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor and uh, Trent. Mm -hmm. You got got, house black. Yeah. House black got dark, a dark order. Dark order. You could do evil Uno and, uh, Silver and Angel, not Angels, uh, Reynolds. Uh, you've got Gun Club. Gun Club. You got Death Triangle. Death Triangle. You got the Factory. Factory. Blackpool Combat Club. Yeah, about Jericho Appreciation Society. You yeah, JAS. You got enough. You got enough two with Jericho Appreciation. You got the Wingmen. So that's yeah. twelve teams right there, and yeah. um, you. I you guess. Did have you did have Tim's house. Yeah. So you did have Tim's house. Not anymore. anymore. You've got um, Sting, Darby, and insert number three. Yeah, you could team somebody up with Men of the Year for American Top Team. I imagine he's, they won't do this yet because he's not healthy, but you do have Punk and FTR. Yeah, you do. You have... Um, I'm trying to think. You, ha- you could put the acclaimed with somebody. Um, yeah, potentially maybe somebody you could team up with Private Party. I don't know. Oh, um, well, I mean, they've been teamed with uh, Angel- Helico. Uh, and, yeah, and Helico, Helico, yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, Andrade and Roosh and... And get maybe? Dragon Lee. Just, just hire Dragon Um Yeah, you had him on the Ring of Honor show. You could just get free... Hire Dragon Lee, <laughs> yeah. I don't think we're going to get Chaos Project teaming with the third person, but if you need to waste somebody, sure, why not? Just, hey, Luther and Serpentigo are teaming with fucking whatever. I mean, you could still do some kind of Team Taz thing if you decide to do with, like, Starks, Hook, and Danhausen. Yeah, that could be a team. Uh, you got like whether Mark Sterling could put together as some sort of collective team with like Josh Woods, Tony Nese, and he could be the third if he really wants. To. I think I think Sean Spears would be a good one to bring mm. for that. Sean Spears needs to be doing something. I feel really bad that he's not. You got the rough in it group, Leon Ruffin and uh, Bear Country. Yeah, yes, they have loads of trios. Too. I mean, that, like, you could, you could do sixteen there. Really. You, you could easily do it. Yeah, you could easily do a 16 team tournament, but have some of the bigger matches, say for um, like Dynamite and Rampage, and have some of the, I guess, lesser qualifying matches on Dark and Elevation, make those a bit more compelling to watch. Mm-hmm. Or, I, I mean, even I, if you I, just want to split the difference and just be like, all right, you know, hey, if we do have Rough in it against the House of Black, that's on Rampage, and well, you know, they've got ring, they've got Ring of Honor they could turn to as well. They could have Dalton Castle and the boys as the Ring of Honor that's six true. champions involved in this as well. Yeah, and uh, and uh, well, what was originally Tully Blanchard Enterprises, I assume is now Prince Nana Enterprises. Uh, oh, it's the Embassy, with, the Embassy, yeah, uh, 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 the Embassy, yeah, with a uh, cage and and the Gates of Agony, uh, yeah, and the Gates of Agony. So, yeah, they they have so many options to do. If they wow, want. we're doing we're doing great here. This is. That's like twenty odd trios teams they have. It's like it's almost it's probably even deeper than their tag roster. <laughs> but yeah, I think I, I I love trios matches when they're done really well. So I think that this is going to be an excellent tournament. Really, really looking forward to 
it and I'm I'm still hedging my bets on uh, Cole and Fish and O'Reilly against Page and the Bucks. Mm-hmm. Just makes the most. Yeah, way, I think Cole, and, Fish and O'Reilly need to be the first. James. And you have and you have Omega appear. I I actually have the I I like Bucks and Page winning him because Omega appears and it's the whole reformation of the the starting elite. So, if they so could we'll get see. Roddy, then it would be like, okay. Yeah, like, where, <laughs> yeah. where's Roddy right now? If they get Roddy, then yeah, like, I'll allow Omega, <laughs> Omega Page and the Bucks. Well, we will, of course, predict that as much as we can throughout the next few weeks and stuff, but leading up to All Out, they'll do the tournament, then we'll have a better idea of who could potentially win because we'll know who's eliminated from the tournament, who's even, you know, in the brackets and everything. But that's a cool thing, you know. New title there, new title with the IG, uh, IWGP Women's Championship. We got new women's tag team champions coming up. A lot of new belt action. Tag team champions. <laughs> Some small, small news. Naomi was just announced as joining uh, Sasha at C2E2 next week. Hmm. So good for them. And hopefully, Triple H will bring them back. <laughs> Well, uh, that is the whole lineup of the hot tags that I had currently uh, listed. And if you enjoyed this episode and you want to let us know, not only can you hit that like button, but you could also help support us through the monetary methods that you got. You know, if you think that doing these podcasts, even just the hot tags four times a month and then the other things, if you think it's worth a buck or more, toss it our way through the Patreon or click that join button on YouTube and you've got the other tiers that you can get to as well, like the dark cast tier, and you pick a poison where you can request things and make sure that we do it. There's also the little thanks button if you don't want to be beholden to like a subscription thing and you just want to go like, hey, here you go. That's the same sort of thing as like the super chats, for instance. And yeah, we got an option for a super chat tomorrow night. We got SummerSlam coming up. So the pay per view point post show is happening for that. But also, if you want some kind of merchandise for what you got and you want to pick up something that way redbubble and t public are the two shops for a smart out moment you could also find things under a mango tees and fanboys anonymous for there and if you of course want to go to fanboysanonymous.com and share some love over there you got the podcasts and youtube channel and everything that are up on that and the articles that are over there so like and follow and share and subscribe and favorite and pass those things along and do all that stuff that you would for that just the same as you would for smart Cow moment it's all going towards the same thing it's all uh boosting the roots of a mango tree <laughs> and watering the plants and everything give us some chlorophyll with a couple bucks or something so go under a mango tree go to a mango tree.com see a bunch of links and follow me at facebook and twitter at tony mango see what else i'm up to also go follow what these guys are doing because they are awesome and they deserve your support just the same, if not more. So check out Dude Felice. Yeah, I'm at Dude Felice on everything. And as always, there are things in the works. And if you just keep searching at Dude Felice, you'll find uh, great things. It won't be under a mango tree, but you will find great things. Callum, do you have any trees? <laughs> uh, no trees. I have a family tree. Ah. Any great things under there? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the great things you should be obviously checking out smartcatmoment.com where you could find the power rankings, which is probably one of the great things that I do. And then there is also the Fantasy League, which is probably, the, well, it's definitely the thing that takes up most of my time to do. Uh, so you can check all the... Uh, check all the standings there as well see who's picking up points as the weeks progress and you can find me on twitter at week 14 all right everybody you know the deal that's it for the hot tags but we do have that pay-per-view point for SummerSlam coming up tomorrow night so we will see you in a little bit over 24 hours from when you're probably listening to this and uh enjoy your friday night enjoy smackdown tonight and enjoy your saturday tomorrow adios for now though we will see you tomorrow night For now, this has been another Smart Out moment, and we are being counted out.